hi to everyone who's new. Hi everyone, welcome to Comfy Cozy Crochet with Tris. I am Tris, and I just want to say um, hi to everyone who's new, and um, hello to everybody else who's returning, and I'm so glad to have you guys here. Thank you so much for being here. Um, this is a UFOs number two video. Um, a couple of weeks back, I did a UFO video or unfinished objects for those unfamiliar with the term. Um, uh, these are, I, I did a, quite a few unfinished objects um, a couple of weeks back, and I will link that video down below if I can remember. Um, I'm always better at linking other people's videos than I am my own. <laughs> I need to get better at that, I guess. Um, but anyway, if you want to check that out, I had too many to put into one video, so I went ahead and split it into two. However, I will confess it does, sorry, I've got itchy cheek over here. I think I've got my hair in my face. Um, I will say that I think there were far more projects in the number one video than there will be tonight, but nevertheless, I thought I'd finish it off for you all. I had several people asking, in fact, about um, blankets that you'd seen in the background that happened to fall into this category as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. As I'm filming this, it is New Year's Day. Um, this is going to go up tomorrow morning on January 2nd, but I just wanted to say Happy New Year to everyone. Um, just it was so nice to ring in the new year and say sayonara to 2020 and I wish all of you just a happy, peaceful, joyous, positive 2021. Let's do it you guys, I'm so excited. All right, so the very first project that we've got here is my granny stripe blanket and it's not granny squares, it's just granny stripes. And this is made, whoops, I'm sitting on it. <laughs> this is made with um, Lion Brand Mandala um, in the color Genie. And show you what this one looks like. And this is just kind of a lapgan size here, but it has this beautiful light to darker gray uh, gradient, and it goes get you in closer um, so you've got oops so you've got all of these beautiful colors this really fun gradient so um, I really enjoy working with this yarn I believe this might have been the first time I ever worked with Lion Brand Mandala um, and I really enjoy it Put it horizontal here so you all can see it and I just think this is such a fun blanket it is kind of my Zen blanket um, every once in a while I get it back out and I just work on a few rows of it here and there and um, I really enjoy working on it um, it's light and airy it's something that's really nice to work work with in the summertime um, and since it is a lightweight three yarn um, I just go ahead and um, a lot of times bring it with me um, for car rides and long trips, things like that, because I know that it's a quick um, and light project to pack with me. Um, so that is this one. And that is, let me see, I've got some notes here um, so that I don't forget who to, te uh, who to link down below. So um, I used a couple of um, tutorials for the Granny Stripe um, blanket here. There was a Bella Coco Granny Stripe tutorial, which is always excellent. Um, and I also used a How to Make the Granny Stripe Crochet 101 series um, by Amanda Crochets. And I'll go ahead and put that down below as well. Apologies, I'm looking on my phone here. I made a list of notes. Um, so anyway, check out Amanda Crochets and Bella Coco down below. Um, they were excellent tutorials, and it's a very, very easy stitch. You're basically just um, doing three double crochets and then going into the next space. So you crochet into the space if you've got fuzzy yarn, um, if you've got yarn that makes it really hard to see your stitches, then this is an excellent stitch for you guys, okay? Sorry, I'm trying to get comfy here. So that's the first one. And again, that was in Mandala, Mandala yarn in Genie. And so that's soft and squishy and light and fun. And I love those colors. They're totally my colors. I thought that it was going to match. I'm pointing. You can't see. <laughs> um, I really thought it was going to match my 
um, living room wall, but it turns out that my living room wall is just a little bit too blue and this is significantly more green actually, but I thought it was going to make a, a lovely throw for the couch actually, but <sighs> you win some, you lose some. <laughs> it's still going to be a fun throw. Anyway, um, my next project is something that was featured in my last video. So if you were one of the lovely people who commented and said that you enjoyed the blanket that was right behind me, um, you were looking at my corner to corner granny rectangle blanket, which is not finished. Here it is. Oh, sorry. Here it is. Can you all see that? up a little closer here get that focusing in there we are it's having a hard time with this yarn for some reason there we go so this is done in three colors I am using Red, Red Heart Hooga yarn. So this is a very thick, very warm blanket. It's almost like a weighted blanket, this one is. Put it to the side horizontally here so you can see it a little bit better. Um, the only reason that I, oh, I guess I didn't say why I stopped the granny um, stripe, this uh, stripe blanket here. Um, I guess the answer is I didn't really quit. Um, I just pick it up every once in a while when I need something really quick, really mindless. I don't need to worry about it. Um, but I actually like, um, I like to work on that in just little bits because I get a little bit bored, to be perfectly honest with you, because it is so easy. You don't have to think about it at all. And, you know, on the 20th row, you sit here and go like, okay. Oh, okay next I, <laughs> I want a different stitch I want a different something and because it's color changing yarn it does all of the work for you but it also does all of the work for you so you don't even have like oh I'm gonna change yarn and tie it off now or something it's just the same for hours and hours and hours so I got a little bit bored with that one but it's still really fun and I'm excited to get back to it eventually and I will I got baby blankets that got in the way and that's honestly going to be a lot of the reason for a lot of these <laughs> um, in that past video and this one so that was that um, for this granny corner to corner this simply got stopped because I ran out of yarn that's all there is to it. Um, I, let's see, where did I end here? Of course I'm gonna have it the wrong way, right? <laughs> let's see, right here. If you can believe it, this is how much I have left to do. So if you're unfamiliar with corner to corner, this is going up like this and it's gonna go to a point. Um, and it was originally quite a lengthy long you know I can't even step back far enough to show you and we've got about a foot left um, and I just ran out of the indigo color and that's my fault in a lot of ways because I just wanted a very slight variation so there are five stripes of this um, beautiful pink light pink color called powder um, and there are five stripes of the cream called pearl and then I did six stripes of the dark blue which is called indigo. I just wanted that blue to stand out just a tiny bit more and I do mean tiny. Um, I didn't want it to be a really, can you see that? I didn't want it to be really really noticeable but I wanted it to be just noticeable that it gave the eye a little bit of something. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have done two more rows of the blue instead of one, but I wanted it to be really slight. And now I ran out of yarn. So I did actually go and get more, I believe. Maybe I didn't. Have I still not gotten that? Hmm. I need to organize my yarn so I know that I have. We're gonna edit all of this out. Um, but I actually just ran out of yarn, so I am just waiting. Um, I just need to go and pick up um, a little bit more of that indigo color um, and finish it off. And I have 
seriously just a few rows left um, because I still do have um, a pretty significant amount of the, the powder and the um, pearl. And so if anybody is wondering as far as the stats of this yarn go, um, I already told you the color names. It is considered a five bulky. They recommend a 10 or a six point, or excuse me, a 10, a K um, 6.5 millimeter hook or a 6.5 millimeter knitting needle. It is machine wash cold, gentle cycle, tumble dry low, 70% um, acrylic, 30% nylon. Um, it was eight ounces, 227 grams, 212 yards, 194 meters. So there's that. And I can't wait to finish this, honestly. It's such a cozy, snuggly, nice, uh, I just love this blanket. So I'm really excited for it and it will be great for the rest of winter. In fact, I might just pick this one up and just finish it off in the next day or two. We'll see, we'll see. So anyway, there is that. And then the last one that I'm um, working on or have stopped working on, I guess, really, um, we'll see, um, is a little bit at a time I'm working on. Oh, so as far as the corner to corner granny rectangle goes, I have used, um, both tutorials by Blossom Crochet. I'll link her work down below. She's wonderful. She um, is from the UK and she has fabulous, fabulous tutorials. If you haven't checked her out, please go do so now. I love her stuff and um, really, really, really easy to figure out and to follow. So um, I used her corner to corner granny stitch tutorial and I also used the how to do the the corner to corner granny into a rectangle. I was very certain I did not want a square. So both of those tutorials will be linked down below as well for you. Okay, and the last unfinished object that I'm gonna talk about today um, is my Willow Square project. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen the Willow Squares and I'm pretty sure a lot of you have also seen um, a lot of people showcasing like stained glass blankets um, where they have black um, is kind of the background color and then from underneath or within squares and things like that they have these beautiful multicolored yarns that just really pop out from the black and they look like beautiful stained glass windows from like a cathedral in Europe they're just breathtaking um, well, I was looking at the Willow Squares. I've seen so many people posting them on Instagram and on Facebook groups, things like that, that I thought, oh my gosh, I really wanna make that, but I want them in something bright and vivid and fun. I don't want it to be muted. And I kept looking at my um, Red Heart Stripe yarn, um, which is not the softest stuff in the world, but it's so very, um, bright and vivid and fun. So um, let me go ahead and show you what I did. I used to have these in some semblance of an order, so I apologize, I don't right now. <laughs> um, but here is one, and again, the, the ends are not woven in because these are, this is a square project. They're also not blocked, so excuse the, the tattered, uh, crumpled aspect here. But here is one, and basically I was going for sort of a stained glass effect with this color changing, very bright, vivid yarn. There's one, two, and that's coming off very different. There we go, there we go, now it's more true. Um, this is actually a lot more purpley, there we go. It's coming off a little better there, but it's still more purpley than it's coming out. It's coming out more pink in the camera. Um, here's this one. This one. This is one of my favorites, I think. This one with just a little bit of blue there. 
this one and this is just very crumpled it's a lot straighter than it's looking there this one that starts off with the blue and then bleeds into the kind of fuchsia magenta and purple and this one starts with that magenta and even has some green here on the side and this one so that is probably blowing up my camera something fierce <laughs> blowing out the color but um anyway so that's what i've got so far and i'm using a couple of different oh and one last one that was just hiding in the bag <laughs> um there's this one as well so what i was using was the red heart super saver stripes in that's what i thought in parrot stripe i did not want to lead you guys astray they have so many beautiful colors in this line um everybody gives um red heart super saver like really a bad rap um and it's not the softest thing in the world but they have such a beautiful array of colors and it's so easy to get your hands on that i use it sometimes and i'm okay with that but i really like the stripes and it's because the colors are so fun to work with you guys i love it am i alone here with this um so anyway i use that and then i got thinking that wasn't enough color for me so i had leftover from um let's see i'm actually in the middle of this one yeah left over from uh one of my best friends blankets i made for her birthday which was a big a giant corner to corner throw um the same it's red heart super saver stripes but this one is in flamenco stripe you guys see that it's just trying to focus on my face instead of the beautiful yarn come on get the yarn yarn is always better <laughs> so anyway i did it in the flamenco stripe and i'm just starting this one i'm trying to lose my place here stitch markers in the wrong spot excuse me sorry about that guys so this is the makings of the first stripe in the flamenco so i thought that that would be nice um, when you're looking at some of these other colors just to get a little bit more um, variation in the color i was just seeing too many of the same two two squares essentially they were coming out very similar so I thought I'd throw a few more colors in the mix so that's what I'm working on with that and that is um, a tu several people have tutorials online for the um, I apologize you guys I'm so tired. I'm going to be so frank with you guys for, for a second. There's going to be quite a bit of editing in this video. Baby boy is crazy teething right now and he's getting in his very back molars and his incisors at the same time. So we're talking, oh, I had to think about the fact that that's eight teeth for a minute. <laughs> um, I'm proving my own point right now. If you see me staring off into space and trying to find my words right now, that's what's going on here. We haven't slept hardly at all in three days. So, excuse me, <laughs> please bear with me. It won't always be like this, I promise. Okay, um, so what I was trying to say, so there are several people who do have tutorials here on YouTube. I will link the one I use down below, which is the Bella Coco version. It does come in either four or five parts, I believe. So I will link number one down below. And then she, of course, has cards and links to the subsequent videos in her video. Um, she makes it very, very easy to um, to follow along. She's she's a great instructor. However, you do, do need to remember that she uses UK terminology and not US terminology for those of us who are in the US. Um, but she makes that very easy. Um, she lets you know in the beginning, hey, just to let you know, this is the UK version, this is the US version. Um, so, so it's not confusing. But um i went ahead she advertises that this is a pattern from jan eaton i was going to say easton i'm really glad i double checked and it is in this book called 200 crochet blocks for blankets throws and afghans by jan e eaton um, crochet squares to mix and match that's what this looks like and it is a 
fabulous book. Just fabulous. There are several um, blocks that are featured there on the back as well. And let's see if I can find like the table of contents here just to start out. Can you guys see all of that? Just so neat. There are so many different ones. And this book, um, I just found it on Amazon. So it would be super easy for you guys to put in 200 crochet blocks, Jan Eaton. That's all I put in. Um, and table of contents, I mean, it's just got a block directory. Um, and several of them, they show um, each block in several, several different colors so that you can figure out the variations. Um, but again, 200 of these babies, they're awesome. Um, so I just didn't want to, every time I did a block, um, for the first several, I needed just that little bit of help. Um, you know, I'd get to row seven, let's just say, and go, is that this one or this one? I just need a quick refresher. And so I'd have to go back through um, Bella Coco's videos to find, was that in number four or number five? Was that in number three or number two? Um, and so I just found it easier to go from the written pattern. And so I went ahead and purchased the book and I am not sorry. There are so many more in this that I can't wait to try. So that's where you can find that one. And I didn't finish, I didn't stop working on this. This was actually a project that I, on purpose started knowing that it was going to be a palette cleanser project um, and what i mean by that is i like to work on a lot of very big afghan throw baby blanket type things i don't make as many hats scarves um cowls shawls although shawls can be a big project too but um i don't make as many of the small washcloth dishcloth type things therefore I was like, you know what, every once in a while, I just wanna say, you know what, I need a break from the blanket that I'm working on. I'm gonna go ahead and make a square. Tomorrow I'll get back to that afghan. You know what I'm saying? So um, I on purpose started this with the intention of this is gonna be a long project. This is gonna be a project that I'm working on for maybe a year or three. <laughs> um, so you might see it featured here and there. Hey, I got a couple more blocks done. Um, and you may not see it featured for a while but I love it. It's fun. And especially when it's just dour and cold and dreary and just mean looking outside in the middle of winter and in the middle of COVID when we're stuck inside anyway, I wanted to look at some bright, vivid, happy colors. And these colors scream happiness to me. So that is the last unfinished object that I'm going to share with you today. I actually think that's about it. Um, unless I'm really forgetting one stuffed in my hope chest somewhere that I didn't see when I went through for the last video. I really do think that's all. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and hopefully you'll see a few of these um, from last video and this video in future podcasts where I can say I've completed them. Um, please give me some crap down below. Tell me, get on it, girl, um, because I need to hear that. Instead of starting all of these other projects, I need to make sure that I'm getting on it. Um, Carrie from Happy Crafty Homemaker always says, I've got starteritis, and that's something that I have absolutely taken up saying. Um, sorry, Carrie, I'm not, I'm not trying to steal your thunder here because I never could, but still, um, if you haven't talked to Carrie or seen her, please, I will link her down below. She's fabulous. She's one of the nicest ladies. She's incredibly talented. She's gorgeous. Um, she has amazing knit and crochet um, content as well as really, really fun um, paper crafting stuff as well. And um, a lot of times she shares a, a quick um, recipe here and there and what's going on in her life. And she's got the most adorable kitty cats ever. I'm totally totally a dog person, but her cats are hilarious. I love watching their mischief. mischief. It's awesome. Um, anyway, I digress. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, time for bed. Um, but anyway, um, she says it's starteritis. I got starteritis and I started three more projects instead of finishing my million I have going on. And it is so true. Um, for sure. Here's all the stuff that I need to finish. Okay. So hopefully I'll get some of it finished soon. We'll see. I'm going to stop rambling now. <laughs> I hope you guys have a fabulous day, night, evening, weekend, 
whenever you watch this and I will talk to you again soon with a much more normal podcast coming up on Tuesday. <laughs> Thanks guys. Happy New Year. Bye.